It's cookie day. We're almost into the holiday season and I love baking cookies for the holidays. Let's look at some of the cookies that I'm going to make. I'm going to be making a Christmas cranberry cookie with white chocolate, a chocolate crinkle cookie with very finely chopped walnuts. These are a little Christmas shortbread with the little green and red speckles in them. This is an espresso shortbread crust with a praline topping. These are spiral snickerdoodles I previously made. So I hope you enjoy watching the recipes. I hope you try some of them and make them part of your holiday festivities. To start off the chocolate crinkle cookies, I'm going to melt one quarter cup of butter and three ounces of unsweetened chocolate. I bought myself a block of chocolate and the easiest way to chop it up is with a serrated knife. Or you could have bought, you could buy chocolate chips too if you can find unsweetened ones. So now while that's melting, I'm gonna get my flour ready. I've got one cup of all-purpose flour, and to that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. Just mix that up. You can't do anything until that melts. But in the meantime, I'll tell you about the other ingredients. This is one cup of, all, of uh, sugar, white sugar, one cup of finely ground walnuts. I put these in my uh, food processor and ground them up until they were really fine. Two whole eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're gonna add that to the chocolate after the chocolate melts and we'll do that on the mixer part. This shouldn't take too long. It's already melting very quickly. You just wouldn't want to leave this at this point because you could burn it. But this is almost completely melted. I'm going to turn off my burner because I'm going to have to get rid of this before I get my mixer ready. And there we go. That's all melted. Put that aside. And I'm going to get rid of this. And get my mixer. All right, so now what I'm going to do, even though it's still kind of warm, I'm gonna put all the chocolate into my mixer bowl. I wanna get every little drop out because I just love the chocolate. Okay, now to that I'm going to add the sugar and get that going on the mixer. Just blend it up well. Now I'm going to add the, uh, I think I'll put the vanilla in first. So I have my homemade vanilla. I just love this stuff. So a teaspoon of that. Wow. And the eggs. I'm going to give that a little bit of a scrape down. And what I'm going to do is it just makes it so much easier for me to add the flour by taking this off. There we go. And I'll throw the nuts in at the same time. What the heck. Now when I finish this dough, it's all well blended. 
I've got to then refrigerate it for at least an hour. This, this kind of cookie dough is best if it's overnight in the refrigerator, but we'll give it two hours and it should be cold enough to handle because we want to make it into balls and right now it's too soft. There we go. It's, it's like fudge right now, which is a good thing. I'm going to put this into a smaller bowl because I need my mixer bowl for something else. So a smaller bowl, it goes. going to cover it in plastic and then in the refrigerator and we'll take it out in about two hours. Our chocolate crinkle cookie dough has been in the refrigerator for about three hours and we're ready to get rolling. Now what we're going to do is make these into balls and we're going to roll them in this coarse sugar. It's not like regular sugar, it's coarse sugar. You can see the little granules. This stuff is available this time of year, the holiday season, a lot of the supermarkets will have some of this in their specialty department, specialty baking. If not online, you can get it anywhere. So just, and it's not expensive. So what we're going to do is take a ball of dough, approximately that size, and then just roll it all around in this sugar. Plop it on the thing, on the uh, pan. That's all I'm going to do now. My oven's at 300 degrees, and when these are all rolled and ready to go, we're going to put them in for about 20 minutes, each one. So I'll just keep rolling away here. Whoops, I just sprinkled sugar all over my floor. Eh, it's okay, the dog will get it. So there's two sheets of the cookies. Since my oven is warm, I'm going to get these two in, and while these are baking, I'll, make, I'll finish up the rest of the dough. I should probably get two more sheets of these. So 20 minutes in a 300 degree oven. Here are our first batch of chocolate crinkle cookies out of the oven. They definitely need to cool off, so I'm going to go put another batch in, and we'll see you later, and I'll show you how they look when they're all cooled off. For these Christmas shortbread bites, some people call them elves bites, I'm going to use one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, and we're going to do this in a food processor this time. It's just so much easier. And then three tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to give that a little mix. This is such an easy recipe, and it's so good and so sweet looking. The cutest little things. Now one stick of softened butter. Come on, get down there. I'm gonna partially blend that. Now, I'm going to put in two teaspoons. That's, this is a half. So I need to do this four times, sorry. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Before it comes together, one and one half tablespoons of these little 
They're like little, but you know, like chocolate shot that you put on ice cream. So this is red and green of the same thing. I went to a local party store and I was able to buy a thing like this for like $3. And I've had it for now for quite a while and it goes a long way. And this one, you only need one and one half tablespoons. And this is what really kind of makes it look so pretty. Oops, I'll deal with that later. Okay. this out. Get rid of this. Squish this together. Okay, now I've got two sheets of wax paper here. I'm going to put the cover on this before I have a terrible accident. What I want here is about a five by eight inch rectangle. One of my favorite tools in the kitchen. periodically square it off a bit because I want I want as clean edges as I can possibly get because we're going to cut these into tiny little squares let me see where am I here it's almost eight it's a little more than five so I don't want it any wider if you don't get it perfectly square, that's okay. Okay, that's, that's only seven. I want it a little bit longer. There we go. Now, I'm going to put this on a tray or on a dish or whatever. We'll just wrap it in plastic and in the refrigerator for about one hour. And then when it's nice and cold, we'll come back and we're going to cut it into little cubes. Here is our Christmas shortbread. It's been in the refrigerator for an oh, hour, hour and a half. Now I'm going to cut it. Now that edge doesn't look so good, but I'm going to bake those anyway because I can munch on those later. And what we want to do is we want to make these into small squares. These are the sort of thing you put a dish full of them somewhere around the house and people just come by and like pop a little bit. Nobody feels guilty about popping a little cookie, but when they have a big hunk of cookie, they all feel guilty. My oven is heating to 325 and these will go in for anywhere from about 15 to 20 minutes. Whack those up real quickly, get those on there. Okay, and then just they don't really need to be that far apart. They're, they're not going to spread. Some more of those misshapen ones. It's like the island of misfit toys. Well, these are the misfit shortbreads.
I've got to be careful because I'm cutting the wax paper and taking that with me too. I don't want that. The knife is so sharp, cutting through everything. Again, these freeze beautifully after they've been baked. So you can make a whole bunch of them. It's a, it's a small batch, but the, you saw how easy they were to put together. So I mean, you could easily mix together three or four batches if you really wanted to and just have them, like I said, in pretty little bowls all around the house. I mean, really, would you feel guilty about eating that? Okay, almost there. Just the misfits here and there. Okay. Into the oven, 325 for about 15 to 20 minutes. These are the Christmas cranberry cookies that I absolutely love. I'm going to start off with one stick or half a cup of very room temperature, very soft butter. And I'm gonna put in a half a cup of shortening, a good quality shortening. Now, somebody might say, oh my gosh, she's putting in shortening. This makes a very tender cookie and a little bit lighter. If you wanna do all butter, you can do all butter. You're gonna get a flatter cookie, a more crispy cookie, but that's up to you if that's what you want. I don't either. Now we'll mix them up until they're well blended. In the meantime, I'll tell you about the other ingredients. Two and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. I also have two eggs, three quarters of a cup of white sugar, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, some vanilla, half a cup, I mean one cup of chopped pecans, one cup of dried cranberries, and then I'm gonna use two cups of really good quality chocolate bits, cho white chocolate bits. So to this I'm gonna add the sugar, the white, and the brown. Turn that down a little bit, okay. I love these cookies. They're, basically the dough is like a chocolate chip cookie dough, but with the addition of some really good fill, uh, top ingredients. There's the eggs. And vanilla. And we'll just let that go for a minute or so. I think I'm going to uh, scrape it down a little bit because I can see a lot of it is just sticking on the sides of the bowl. We want it all together. Now with my mixer on low, I'm going to start adding all the flour. quality white chocolate chip. Okay, can add the pecans, add the cranberries. That 
that's it. So I'm going to clean up a little bit and then I'll come back with some cookie sheets and I'll show you how to bake them. Now it's time to scoop out the cook, uh, cranberry cookies. Just use a little scoop. I love this scoop but it's, it's kind of getting a little older and uh, sometimes it doesn't always pop out the cookies so I have to give it a, a little nudge. I'm using one of my smaller scoops instead of my large scoops. I just don't like a big honking cookie, you know? Well, because the, these spread a bit. Now my oven's going to be at 375 degrees. And these are going to go in anywhere from 9 to 12 minutes. You're just going to have to keep checking them and make sure that they don't burn or get too brown. Some people like them a lot browner than I do. I like mine a little bit, not as much on the brown side. But I do love white chocolate and I do love cranberries and I do love pecans, so what's not to like with these? All right, so into my 375, 9 to 11 minutes, somewhere around there. Here are our Christmas cranberry cookies just out of the oven. They're super hot, but they smell delicious, and they're going to be a great part of your holiday cookie platter. Praline shortbread is sort of like a pecan pie on top of an espresso crust. It's really good. In my, bowl, in my bowl here, I have one tablespoon of espresso powder, and to that I'm going to add one tablespoon, just a touch more, of almost boiling water. And what I'm going to do is mix that up. It forms kind of like a paste almost. Then I want to strain it because we don't want, we want the flavor in there, but we don't necessarily want all those grinds in there. So this is going to have to sit for about four or five minutes until it really drains out. So I'm going to let that go over to the side. I'll show you what we're going to do with our pan. I have a 9 inch square pan, just regular 9 inch square pan. I'm sure most of you have one of these. Could you make it in an 8 inch? Yes, you could. You might have to leave it in the oven a little bit longer because the crust would be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to spray the inside. And now I have two pieces of parchment paper that I'm going to line this with. One goes that way, and bring it up. Now I'm going to spray this again so this piece will stick. It goes that way. And just try to get it as even as you can. And you can see it wants to keep falling in, so We'll use these little clips, and these will keep everything from falling in. And because otherwise, when we start putting our stuff in here, it's going to be we're going to be fighting with these flaps. So this is just a good way to keep them out of our way. Okay, and now again, we're going to spray this piece of parchment paper. Okay. And there's our prepared pan. I'm going to put this out of the way for a minute. Now I have one cup of sugar, one stick of room temperature butter, two thirds cup of cornstarch, and one and two thirds cup of flour, and some vanilla. Oh, can't forget this peanut butter. We're going to use a couple of tablespoons of the peanut butter in here. So, what we're going to do here. 
we're going to put our cornstarch in. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I'm not paying attention. I'm thinking that I need to mix the flour and the cornstarch together, <clears throat> which I will now do. The butter goes in here. And two tablespoons of creamy peanut butter. Don't worry, my hands are really clean. Uh, they have been in the water all morning. Okay, now we will start creaming these two together. And please don't use margarine, use butter. This is shortbread after all. up the cornstarch and the flour. I'm going to add my sugar in. Trying to scrape down. I'm going to add our vanilla. As you can see, you don't get an awful lot of the coffee, but we're just looking for that hint of the coffee flavor. It's pretty strong, though. It's almost like an extract at this point. Okay. And I'm going to take it off for a minute. Scrape it down. My oven, by the way, is heating at 350 degrees, so we're going to bake this base and then we're going to make a nice cooked praline topping. So delicious. shortbread seems to be a little bit too thin, then you can add a little bit of water, you know, just to give it a little bit more adhesiveness. Like this is really looking thin. I mean, not thin, it's really looking not wet. There's a lot of stuff stuck on the bottom. just a little bit of water, like a tablespoon. That's better. We've got our pan ready, our oven's ready. This is going to go into that 350 oven for about 20 minutes. a little stubborn with me today. That's it. Okay. So now, I'm 
going to put this in the bottom of our pan. Spread it out evenly. Now I've got something, i got a spatula here because you kind of want to tamp this down, make it even. Just get, make sure you've got every little area with stuff in it, okay? Now if somebody asked me, can I leave the clips on when I put it in the oven? I, I don't recommend it, although the last time I made this, I did, and they came out fine. So anyways, now I have here, it looks like a medieval torture tool. It's actually a, called a docking tool. You can do, you can use a fork and just make a lot of holes. This just makes it faster. Got a little bit on there. Okay, now in the oven for 20 minutes and then we'll take it out and when it cools down then we'll make a topping for it. Here's our praline base, uh, shortbread base that I've taken out of the oven and wouldn't you know I forgot to take the clips off and look they're perfectly fine they went through the oven without a problem. So I'm going to put this aside it's nice and cool now and in a pot on my burner I'm going to put 12 tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to add to that three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. So there's one quarter, two, and three. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of corn syrup. If you make a lot of candy, I'm sure you're very familiar with corn syrup. Now I'll have to really wash that off well, otherwise I'll never get the cap off of it next time. Now we want to bring this to a boil, and once it reaches a boil, we want to keep cooking it for about five minutes and stir it constantly. Don't go away because you will have a mess. When it's all done, cooking. We'll put in this one cup of chopped pecans and then we'll put it on the base. So got to wait till it comes to a boil and then cook for five minutes. It'll, it'll get nice and thicker. And we don't start counting the five minutes until it comes to a boil. All right, it's come to a boil. Now I'm gonna turn it down a little because I don't wanna boil it for five minutes, I wanna simmer it for five minutes. So I'll turn it down a little bit and I will keep stirring. Not constantly, but almost constantly. So I'll see you in five. All right, so it's been the five minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat off, take it off, throw in the nuts. And this you don't wanna wait too long. If the phone rings, let it ring. Get this out of there first. and then get it spread out quickly because this is going to set fairly quickly. Although it won't cool off very quickly. This thing is really hot. So before you can do anything, anything with these, these have to chill down completely. And I don't mean in the refrigerator, just at room temperature until they are completely cold and the topping is set. You can touch it and it won't be sticky anymore. So there's the pecan praline uh, shortbread and I'll show you how it looks when it's all done.
Here's our praline shortbread and it's been really cooled down and I can start taking it out of the pan. First I got to get rid of these little clippies. Okay. Now, just peel it down. piece that got stuck in the caramel there. And now I like to cut these into, some people might want to cut them into squares. I like to cut them into fingers. I sometimes think when I cut things like this, I have a crooked eye. I kind of go off a little bit. But again, because they're going to be all cut up and not together, no one will notice. Who's going to stand there and compare the size? Like I said, this is like having a, a pecan pie and an espresso crust. So good. I'm going to cut one of the... See, I like to bring them out about there and about there. So when you've got your pecan praline shortbread, turn that around so you can take a look. That is a mouthful of joy. They'll look really nice on your cookie platter and I hope you try them. They're more like candy than anything else.